Hi, my name is John Gabranson. I'm a chemical engineering student at the University of Michigan. This summer, I conducted research on nanomaterials for lithium ion batteries with Professor Levi Thompson's group. We use lithium ion batteries for many applications such as portable electronics and electric vehicles and are highly valued for their high energy to weight ratio, no memory effects, and high cycle life. A typical anode material in a lithium ion battery is made from graphite. My summer research involved exploring a new type of nanomaterial made from titanium nanotubes deposited with silicon. The first step in making our anode is a process known as anodization. An electrolyte solution is used to etch a nanotube into a titanium plate forming titanium oxide tubes with a width in the range of 40 to 200 nanometers depending on the applied voltage and roughly 20 to 30 microns in length depending on time. The plates are then prepared for silicon deposition. Silicon nanoparticles are deposited as a thin film by the process of sputtering. Although silicon itself has an extremely high capacity, alone it is not a viable nanomaterial. When lithium is cycled, expansion in silicon leads to degraded crystalline structure and low cycle life. When silicon is deposited in nanotubes, the expansion is controlled and the cycle life is restored. The titanium nanotubes deposited with silicon are harvested from the plate. Polyvinylidene fluoride is used as a binder and the nanomaterial is pasted onto the copper plate. After the solvent evaporates, the button cell is ready to be built. Because lithium is highly reactive to water and corrodes in oxygen, we assemble our cells in a glove box that minimizes these reactants. The first component in assembling our cell is the bottle container, which has an insulation ring that will seal our cell from moisture and air. The nanomaterial is then placed in the container. A few drops of organic electrolyte will allow lithium ions to move through the cell. A polypropylene separator is then placed over the anode to block electron flow. This allows only lithium ions to cycle through the battery. Lithium is now added to act as a counter electrode. In a typical cell, a cathode will be placed here, but since we are investigating anode materials, the lithium metal provides a consistent counter electrode. A highly conductive copper plate is added to fill the remaining void and a spring to ensure even contact. Finally, the cell lid is placed and the cell can now be sealed. The button cell can now be tested using MACOR, which monitors relevant data such as cycle capacities and voltage curves.